Hello students. Today we will discuss about what is literature, Terry Eagleton. This uh, course of part is included in MA English final. I know exams are drawing near and we have to do. Many, many students are not able to understand this essay written by Terry Eagleton. So I am here to help you out for uh, translating it in an easy language. If there is any problem, you can ask any question to me by commenting or by writing your queries in the comment sections. Thank you. Now we will start this uh, part to uh, Terry Eagleton. What is literature? Try to understand it. Terry Gill, first of all, we should know about Terry Gilton. Who is Terry Gilton? Terry Gilton is an illuminary uh, person in the world of literary theory and cultural criticism, has left an indelible mark on the study of literature through his groundbreaking work. Now, uh, the work, What is Literature, is published in 1983, and this seminal text has been a touchstone for scholars and enthusiasts alike, sparking uh, provocative uh, debates and reshaping our uh, understanding of what constitutes literature. Now, in this uh, part, in this essay, I can uh, I can say in this literary criticism of work, what is literature? Eagleton dwells deep into the intricate relationship between literature and society, offering a critical lens through which we can interrogate the essence of literary creation. Now, drawing from eclectical area of uh, philosophical and uh, historical and uh, literary sources, he scrut uh, scrutinizes the various roles that literature plays in our lives from its aesthetic and imaginative dimensions to its political and ideological implications. So, since or whether it is a product of cultural and historical contingencies, he skillfully navigates the treacherous waters of literary theory. I must say, um, he skillfully navigates the treacherous, treacherous water of literary theory, examines the writings of luminaries such as Ronald Barth, as you know very well, Ronald Barth wrote uh, The Death of an Author, Zach Derrida, and Sigmund Freud, all while weaving his own distinct insights into the narrative. Egilton's work is more than a treatise on the nature of literature. It is a catalyst for a broader exploration of how we define ourselves as individual and as a society through the stories we tell and the word we write. His intellectual prowess challenges us to question assumptions rethink re-established paradigms and engage critically with the literary and cultural artifacts that shape our world. Through the thought-provoking landscape of Terry E. Gilton, what is literature? We are not we are invited not only to explore the profound mysteries of literary theory, but also confirm our own beliefs about the power and the significance of literature in our lives. Through Eagleton's lens, we gain a deeper appreciation for the transformative potential of literature and the enduring relevance of critical inquiry in our ever-evolving world. In the world of literary theory, scholars have long been puzzled by what makes something literature. Some people think literature is just imaginative fiction. But when we look closely, when we introspect it at what we call literature, we see this idea doesn't cover everything. For example, in the 16th century, what we consider literature included not just famous writers like uh, Shakespeare, Milton, but also essays, sermons, personal stories, and philosophical writings. Similarly, uh, 
uh, French literature for the same time included all sorts of things like plays, wise sayings, speeches and philosophy. So jumping ahead uh, to the 18th century in England, some writers like Lamb and Macaulay were celebrated as literary figures, but others like Bantham and Mac Marx were left out. So this shows us that defining literature isn't straightforward. It changes over time and depends on different factors. Distinguishing between facts and fiction can be unclear with historical context playing a significant role. Authors like Gibbon and the authors of Genesis may have uh, interacted or uh, I must say intended, intended fact but interpretation vary today. Uh, John Henry Newman, uh, theological medication, med meditations, one considered truth are now often seen as literature. Literature can em encompass, uh, encompass factual writings, uh, leaving much uh, fiction outside. The boundary, the boundary between fact and fiction is complex context dependent and challenging to define. According to Russian critique to Roman Jacobson, literature is like organized violence committed on ordinary speech. This is one of my favorite lines that literature is poetry is an organized violence committed on uh, ordinary speech. It's just like that, that we are continuously doing rape of an uh, ordinary language that is uh, yeah this is this is a organized violence we can say it is a organized violence so it takes everyday language and transform it you know it takes uh, uh, for example now eagleton discussed about formalism in his essay and he said that formalism was a literary approach that applied linguistic principles to the study of literature. It focused on the formal structures of language rather than the actual content of literary works. The formalist believed that the literary form was not merely an expression of content, but rather that the content served as a motivation for specific formal elements. For example, they argued that Don Kotsky was not primarily uh, about its titular character, but instead used the character as a device to showcase various narrative techniques. Similarly, in Animal Farms, they saw the construction of allegory as a formal exercise not as a direct reflection of a satellinism. Essentially formalists viewed literary works as a collection of arbitrary devices. These devices including elements like sounds, imaginary, imagery and rhythm, syntax, meter, rhyme and narrative techniques. Everyday language tended to dull our perceptions and responses to reality through habit. Literature by forcing us to engage with language in a more conscious and sternest manners. Now, for instance, um, uh, Gerald Men Hopkins poetry exemplified this by reshaping language to provide a vivid experience. Literary discourse achieved this uh, estrangement by making us this word estrangement is very very important uh, in this um, literary work what is literature so we have to use this estrangement in our um, exam so this word estrangement by making us more aware of language itself Literary discourse achieved this estrangement by making us more aware of language itself, bringing us into a full position of our experiences. Formalism emphasized the formal 
uh, elements of literature and how they estranged ordinary language making the familiar world unfamiliar by doing so to invite readers to engage more deeply with both language and the experiences it conveyed for example a word like genial might be considered poetic in one place but is just ordinary language in another so even something that seems very ordinary to us might have some uh, have sounded poetic in the past due to its uh, old fashioned style if we were to find a piece of writing from a society that no longer exist we couldn't tell if it was poetry just by looking at it we wouldn't have access to that society's everyday language and not all language deviations are poetic some might be slang for instance or um, to understand if a piece of writing was literature or not we would need more information about how it functioned within that society the russian formalist in that society the russian um, formalist acknowledged that what is considered literary language depends on where and when you are language that seems un unusual and poetic in one context might not be in uh, so in another they believed that making language strange was a key aspect of literature but understood it as a contrast between different types of speech however they didn't aim to define literature itself but focused on literariness special language uses found in literary text and beyond they noted that many literary devices like metaphors are also used in everyday speech so still they thought making language strange was crucial in literature but it depended on the contrast between different types of speech for example if someone in a pub mentioned awfully squeakly handwriting it's considered literary because it's from a novel by nut hamson but the language itself doesn't inherently stand out as literary it is context like knowing it is from a novel that makes it literary so the formalist viewed all literary 